Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 22, still looking at the priesthood. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, the priests, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me, I am the Lord. See, we're to put difference between holy and unholy for all those around us. By the Bible standard, we're to look at and do that which is right, not that which is wrong. Because there'll be people looking at us, there'll be people judging us, there'll be people looking for fault in us as an excuse to God. These Levites, priests, high priests, they were the examples to the nation of what was to be done. They were the teachers of God. They would tell the people with the law, this is what you need to bring, this is what you need to do. So strict would they have to be because if if they did not do to the letter of the law the wrath of God not being forgiven say unto them whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations plural that goeth unto the holy things which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord they brought the offering and the offering is hallowed by them bringing it for God. Having his uncleanness upon him. That soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. So. A child of God. Israelite. Brings an offering to the gate. Of the tabernacle. And he's doing it because he loves the Lord. And, and wants to do right. And he wants God to be pleased with him. And then when you get somebody like Eli's sons. Who have disgraced who are sinners who are wicked in the eyes of God take that offering that that guy's giving to the Lord now that offering that person gave the Israelite that came that is hallowed that's God's and then when that priest comes and does and read Eli's sons God says I look at that priest and I say you know what that soul is caught, cut off of my presence that presence is the tabernacle that's where God said, I will meet with the children of Israel off the mercy seat, that tabernacle, where God dwells in the Old Testament. And God tells his priests, listen, yeah, I, I ain't going to look at you. You're wicked. Well, you're, that priest is cut off. I don't care if your father keeps you in service as Eli did. They died a violent death and ended up in hell. And when uh, when one of their children is born to the wife, she calls him Ichabod, the glorious departed. Why? Because the priests are wrong. During that time, the, the, the fire went out. And Samuel was there. And the ark got stolen. So, just because you're a priest does not mean you're not a sinner. Now today we have it more vast in the church age because we don't have a, a group of people set aside by God with clothing, with a, a tabernacle that to be made. We got churches all buildings all over the world. And many people think just because that person speaks out of the pulpit, oh, he's got to be holy, he's got to be right. When Paul, when Paul warned the, the, the Corinthians, that may be Satan's ambassador out of that pulpit. 
There's another spirit. There's another Jesus. There's another gospel. John warns us about deceivers. We got a little more heart of faith and a complete Bible to judge those people out of the pulpit. And we have every right by the Bible. If that man preaches and he doesn't match the Bible, we have every right to step out of that church and never go back there again. But here, that's, I'm trying to think of a Jewish name. Let's just say Jacob. Well, Jacob is the son of this man, which is the son of this man. When well, he can trace it all the way back to Aaron, so he's the priest. But even thinking like that, just because he's son of Aaron, doesn't make him right. And you'll see that when you go through, uh, when we go through Samuel and Kings and Chronicles. Men all have sinned. It's in your heart. What man soever the seed of Aaron, okay, so this is Aaron's children, is a leper or has a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things. I already talked about leprosy. Until he be clean. So if he's got leprosy, which we already discussed, Outside of Naaman is set in part of the law right now to Jesus Christ. Not one leper ever got healed. And there was even a leprosy among one of the kings of Judah while he was offering incense to the Lord. Leprosy fell upon him. And he wasn't the priest, but that leprosy would, would be there. And that priest would not be able to eat until he'd be clean. And as far as recorded, there were no clean lepers under the law. Except for Naaman. And whosoever touches anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man whose seed goeth from him, comes, comes in contact with a dead man, uh, he, he's gooing, sexual, or whatsoever touches any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, Whosoever uncleanness he had, whatever the situation that priest has become made to be, has become unclean. The soul which has touched any such shall be unclean unto even, 6 p.m. And shall not eat of the th holy things, unless he washed his flesh with water. And that would be, we're going to see in a minute. That's going to be after 6 p.m., after the sunset. He's unclean. He washes after 6 p.m., after the sunset. And after he washes, then he can have his meal, but not before. So if he's going down the street and boom, somebody drops dead in front of him, he can't eat that holy offering until after the sun is set until after he washes then he can have that meal or anything else which we've read so far can make him unclean he shall not eat the holy things unless he has washed his flesh with water and when the sun is down that's evening that's jewish evening he shall be clean and shall afterward eat of the holy things because it is his food. So uncleanness does not restrict him for life. Just a period of time. But complete wickedness. God says, oh, no, no, no. So there is room for the priest for all have sinned. But if you want to continue in your sins, you don't want to separate from your sins. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean. And shall afterward eat the holy things because it is his food. That which died of itself. I don't know what an animal died. When an animal's walking, boom, he kills over. Or is torn of beasts. Lions have attacked it. Wolves have attacked it. He shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. And we've already read the dietary laws. So, what are we doing here? Well, the Bible says you can't have lobster. Well, you see, that's for you people. As far as me, God's anointed. 
I can have it. The rules were for the people, not for us. And you even saw them speak about that, the Sanhedrin in Jesus' time. He spoke ill of the people. And that's almost uh, where in Revelation God speaks about that hierarchy, I can't think of it, Nicolaitanism. You're one of the low people, but we're, we're the minister, we're the pastor, we're the rabbis. And God just said, I don't care you're the priest. You are under the same dietary laws as the people. So God is saying, listen, you are in an elevated position, but don't forget who you are. You're a sinner. And many preachers and, and people out of the pulpits today need to realize that. They've forgotten that. So, defile by eating something that he's not supposed to eat. Defile. They shall therefore keep my ordinance, just as much as the children of Israel. Least they bear sin for it. And die thereof. Ooh. Sin. Look at that. They shall keep my ordinance. At least they bear sin for it and die thereof. There is Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Do you know Romans 6.23 is written to Christians? I know we use it. It's great to use spiritually application to lost people. But doctrinally, that is to Christians. Okay, Romans 6.23, we have Leviticus 12.9, sin and death. There it is, written to the priests. Written to the children of Israel. What you're going to see when Paul writes, when James writes, when John writes, you're going to see the Old Testament, and there's Romans 6.23. The wages of sin causes death. Therefore, if they profane it, the, the ordinance, I, the Lord, do sanctify them. They shall, there shall no stranger... Now, this stranger is not just Gentile. This stranger is anybody who's not a priest. The 11 tribes of Israel, including the Levites, because all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. It's very important. Eat of the holy thing. And kind of funny, Sam, 1 Samuel 21, 6, David goes in, and eats the bread after it's been taken off the table. And yet David has that remarkable service of being prophet, priest, and king. The same office that Jesus has. And I forget which, I, I, I always forget his name, but there is a king that walks into the holy place. He's offering incense to God out of the, out of the incense altar, and God strikes him with leprosy. And Jesus speaks about David eating of that bread, and he does not condemn David for doing it. A sojourner, that's a temporary dweller. That's what we are in this earth. We don't live here. We don't belong here. We're pilgrims of the priests. So here is somebody who's staying at the priest's house. He's not family. He's come into town, and the priest says, here, stay in my house. Or a hired servant, a man that he's paying to be his servant, shall not eat of the holy thing. So, if they're at his house, and bread is laid on the table, or a good piece of shoulder, and that, hey, that looks good, uh, can't have it. Well, why not? That's the priestly do. You're not a priest. You're not authorized to eat that. It's holy. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, slave. As bad as people think slave, buy a soul with his money. He shall eat of it, the person he bought. And he that is born in his house, his children. They shall eat of his meat, the priest's meat. His sons and his daughters, his wife, are able to eat that meat. Well, the sojourner, a stranger, including Gentile. But if the priest's daughter, okay, let's get the priest's daughter, be a widow or divorce and has no child, 
Well, Paul spoke about that to Timothy about the widows. If there's a widow and she has family that can take care of her, let the family take care of her. See that? So here's a widow or a divorced woman, and there's no one there to take care of her. And is returned unto her father's house, the priest's house, her father. As in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat. So under those conditions, she goes back to her father because she has no husband and no one is able to take care of her. She can go back on her father's roof and eat that holy meat, which is her father's. But there shall no stranger eat thereof. Look at how that shows up twice again. Verily, verily. Make sure no stranger. So a, a daughter of the priest growing up in the house can eat. And under these conditions, she can come back and eat of the meat. But if she gets married and gets a husband and gets a house, she can't come back and eat that meat. If a man eat of the holy things unwittingly, David knew. Here's a man, uh, the shoulder, the rump, bread, the meat offering. It's there. He comes over and he starts chowing down. He has no idea. He thinks it's free. He thinks it's for him. He has no idea what he's doing, what he's eating. Then he shall put the fifth part, 20%, there into it. So if he had a loaf of bread, I, I think it's, I forget the fraction. He's got to add five more loaves of bread. And shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing. So he's got to pay back the priest plus 20% what he did. He didn't know what he was doing. So that priest comes up, hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm just having a little meal here. Well, that's the priest do. That's not yours. How much did you eat? All right. Get the calculator, the abacus, whatever they used back then. 20% you owe us. And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel. What's the holy things of the children of Israel? What they bring to God. So what Israel is giving to God is a holy thing. So what is the money, the time, the effort? And everything that we give God today. We don't bring him animals. We don't bring him sheep. We don't bring him you know, oxen. We don't bring him flour. We bring our time, our effort, and our money. God calls that a holy thing. And that holy thing ought not to be used for strangers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And he shall not profane that offering of the children of God, the children of Israel. Uh oh. Or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass. You cross the line. You have crossed the line with that what that Jew brought to God. You have misused it. When they eat their holy things, I the Lord do sanctify them. When the priests are allowed to eat, God says, You're set apart, you're mine. You can do that. And the Lord's thinking to Moses saying, Speak unto Aaron. And to his sons, unto all the children of Israel, say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, any Jew, any Israelite, or the strangers in Israel, there's the Gentiles. That's a Gentile like the man of Ethiopia come and to be apostolite. He's willingly and knowingly, I'm worshiping the Hebrew God. Naaman was that. Man, he got he got right with God. That will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his free will offerings, which he will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. This, this is the offering I'm going to give to God freely. I want to do it. Ye shall offer at your own will. It's a free will, but God's going to say this is what you do. Salvation is a free will. God says you can choose Jesus or you can reject Jesus. Do whatever you want. But 
You better believe on Jesus Christ, get born again, believe on, on the gospel of Jesus Christ in order to be saved. That's right here, too. You want to bring something free to God? Glory to God, do it. But this is what you got to do. They're setting the people up for Jesus. You can choose Jesus or you can reject Jesus, but it's Jesus is going to save your soul. But man, who has that free will. Pharaoh was like that. Hey, let my people go. You don't want to let my people go? Right, I'm going to give you wonders and signs and kill you. But you had that free choice. So, you shall offer a man without blemish of the beeves. That's plural of beef. Of the sheep. Or of the goats. But whatsoever has a blemish. The animal. The animal has a blemish. Now this is going to be interesting here. That shall ye not offer. For it shall not be acceptable unto you. That animal has a scar. Its eye is something wrong with it. Its horn has been broken or deformed. It's got something wrong with its hoof. And go on and on and on. And whosoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in bees or sheep, it shall be perfect, perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. So you got to study that animal. You just don't pick an animal out of flock. You got to nurture that. You got to say, you know, that lamb over there, so far that lamb looks good. Yeah. When that lamb comes of age, I'm going to bring it to God. So now you got to take care of that lamb. Now you got to protect that lamb. Now you got to do everything for that lamb to make sure when you bring him to that tabernacle, it's clean, it's without blemish. And that's where pastors fail today in the church. They look at the church people, oh, well, who cares? And the people are blemish. When Jesus came, you have a, you're a bunch of sheep, but you have no shepherd. No one's got. You're, you're out in the wilderness. You're running around. You're broken. You're, you're, you're sick. And the entire nation of Israel was sick when the shepherd came. When you choose that animal, whatever it be, a goat, beef, or whatever it is, you got to take care of it now. Blind or broken. You know, if you couldn't get money on the, I'm going to say the meat market, off that animal, you can't say, okay, well, God, I'll give it to you. God says in Malachi, offer it to the governor, will you? Give it to the governor. See if he'll accept it. God already told you I wanted the perfect. Blind or broken or maimed or having a wind, that's a tumor or swollenness or scurvy or scabs. Ye shall not offer these unto the Lord or make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. Now let's go back to 21 verse 16. Now this is very interesting. The Lord said to Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever ye be the seed of the generations that has any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. Whatsoever man he be that has a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or lame or he that has a flat nose. And we read that whole thing. We're not going to read it again. Do you see what God did here? I want an offering that's likened to the priest, and I want the priest likened to the offering. Now, isn't that interesting? As the priest, so is the offering. As the offering, so is the priest. That's what we're to be. Uh, scab, you shall not offer unto the Lord. Make, nor make an offering by fire. Verse 23. Either a bullock or a lamb that has anything super, superfluous, extra parts. 
or lacking in his parts, thou mayest thou mayest though offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. I'm not going to take it. You shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut. Neither shall ye make an offering thereof in your land. Now let's go to Malachi. I just want to have to find, since I mentioned it. Uh, it says offer it to the governor. Uh, chapter 1, verse 7. Malachi 1, 7, please, that's what I'm looking for. He offered polluted bread upon my altar. He say, where is it polluted thee? And that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. It's worthless. Who cares? No, it's just a job. Now watch this. And if he offered the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? Run back to Leviticus chapter 22 and 21. And if he offered the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the, thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or set thy person? Save the Lord oath. Offer to the ruler of your nation. Give him that blind animal. Give him that animal who has had a chunk taken out by, you know, where David says, I pulled the ear out of a, a lion or a bear. Okay, David, that, that sheep, offer him to King Saul. See if he'd be pleased. He wouldn't be pleased. And yet when we get to Malachi, that's exactly, they're, they're doing opposite of what the law said. Jesus comes in the temple, he, he makes a squirt of ropes, and he's chasing them out of the temple. They're making a marketeer of the people for the sacrifices. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 25. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them. They already begin to decay. They're already been bruised. They're, they're not the best. And blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. We ought to offer God our best. And this ties with, with and I'm guilty with the public ministry. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I'll go do it. That's not God giving God the best. That's, that's someone who's tired. That's someone who's fed up. That's someone who's not got a proper attitude. That's not right. Oh, God says, I got to write out a check. Oh, and Paul tells the Corinthians, be willing. God loves a cheerful giver. I don't know what this guy would be singing when he's approaching the tabernacle. He wouldn't be saying he has a joy, joy down deep in his heart, but why not? I mean, he's not saved as we are saved. He ought to be praising God. I'm bringing this animal. I've taken care of God. I nourished this animal. I protected this animal. I, Lord God, I did everything I could for this animal because I want you to have it. Verse 26, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When a bullock, or a sheep, or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the dam, that's the mother, and from the eighth day, and thenceforth it shall be accepted an offering made by fire. And that, that baby animal has to be eight days old. Seven days you, you keep him under his mother. The eighth day you are allowed to offer that animal to God. And whether it be a cow or you, 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 ye shall not kill it and her young both in one day. You don't kill the mother and the baby the same day. When ye shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. And see 1 Peter 2, 1-5 on that. 1 Peter 2, 1-5. through 5. On the same day it shall be eaten up, the offering. You shall leave none of it unto the morrow, no leftovers. 
I am the Lord. How are the people going to know this without the priest teaching them? And what are the priests doing in the book of Malachi? They're not teaching the people. Their attitude, oh, I gotta put the bread up. Oh, yeah, it's time to put the bread up. Do I trim the candle? Oh, they're bringing the animals again. I wanna get, it's a time to, I gotta go home. I don't feel well. God, this, this, this is a miserable service. And there are a lot of Christians like that. And so the people are bringing animals that are not fed, according to, and they're taking them. They haven't been taught. If the nation of Israel had been taught like they were supposed to by the priest, they would have knew exactly who Jesus Christ was. And like those men on Jonah's ship, Lord God, he said we got to throw him over. But Lord God, please do not apply that blood to us. God, we're only doing what your prophet told us to do. And with Jesus Christ, who was a type of Jonah, they would have said to God, the scripture says that the Messiah needs to be killed, Isaiah 53. Lord God, we're going to do it because that's what your word says. We believe you. We want to do right. But Lord God, please do not put his blood upon our hands. Where they told Pilate his blood be upon us and our children. And had they been taught by the scriptures of the priests and the Levites properly, they would have received Christ and God would have been blessed. And we would not be here today. But we, be, we would be seven years tribulation and then a million years. Well, we, we would be in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, millennium reigns right now. But they had no idea. They were sick. They weren't taught right. The own priests were trying to kill Jesus. Uh, didn't they read, Thou shall not kill? Didn't they read about enviness? Pilate said, Because of envy. They didn't care. How do you know they don't care? We're reading Leviticus 22 about that animal sacrifice and what did we read in Malachi 1? They weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Verse 31, Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Neither shall ye profane my holy name. Paul says somewhere that they polluted God among the Gentiles. For I will be hallowed, holied, among the children of Israel, I am the Lord which hallow you. They're a holy people. And we read in Romans today, Paul said, God is not done with them. He set them aside a little bit, but he's never done with them. How can you make someone God made holy? As a nation, they brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Here you are. 